Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to our Wednesday night worship. Uh, tonight, we're going to begin by singing a resurrection hymn as we're celebrating the Easter season now. Uh, what a joy it was on Sunday to hear again the story of Jesus Christ, his life, his death, and his resurrection. So let's start tonight singing, Low in the Grave He Lay. our time of prayer and we're going to want to share with you portions from a letter that was prepared by Reverend William Talbert or as we know him here at Linden, Bill Talbert. He's a member of our church but also is the National Peace Ad Ad Ambassador for the Republic of Liberia. And he has written a letter sharing some of the concerns for Liberia both for the health issues that COVID-19 has, has caused, but also ongoing issues and a significant anniversary that happened on Easter Sunday. Here from Dr. from Bill Talbert, please. Dear brother, dear fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, friends and international partners, Fraternal greetings to you from the Office of National Peace Ambassador of Liberia. His Excellency, Dr. George Mana Weya, and officials of government, religious and traditional leaders, civil society and other stakeholders, as well as our international partners, are reminding us of our roles and our responsibilities during this time. 
During the prolonged and devastating conflicts, we knew the enemies to be warring fa factions. We could see and hear military hardware. We could see men, women, and children deployed throughout the country. The enemies were visible, and with appropriate strategies, they were defeated during combat. By comparison with Ebola then and COVID-19 now, we see no military hardware or personnel deployed. In fact, we cannot see the enemies and do not know where they will come from, when or how they will come. Nevertheless, warfare is being waged against us as a nation and people. We are prepared to defeat the com common enemies and national challenges. Besides COVID-19, these also include illiteracy, poverty, other diseases, environmental cleanliness, corruption, governance, and the need for genuine reconciliation to sustain our peace. The second reason why April 12th, 2020 is significant for Liberia is that on April 12th, 18, 1980, 40 years ago, the true Whig Party government of President Talber was toppled during the military coup d'etat. The president was assassinated April 12, 1980, and on April 22, 1980, 13 of his government officials were executed on the poles at the beach adjacent to the military barracks. Hence, this day shall be one of reflection. So we do not repeat man's inhumanity to man in our history by lack of knowledge about the past, our complacency or indifference. While all want to forget, only some want to forgive. But it is necessary that we seek forgiveness and seek divine healing and restoration in order for us to attain genuine reconciliation as a nation and people. We must restore our relationship. Our efforts, prayers, and supports will make a difference not only for Muslims and Christians, but also for our traditional constituencies. From the Office of the National Peace Ambassador, be assured of our partnership. We must make a difference for every man, woman, boy, girl in every city, town, village in Liberia, Africa, and in the world. That's Jim, if he would offer a prayer, specifically for Liberia, for the concerns with the COVID-19, but also as this significant anniversary has just come on Sunday and continues to be fresh on the hearts and minds of those in Liberia and those Liberians who are spread throughout the world. Before I pray, let me just mention that um, Liberia and the United States have a unique connection uh, that goes back uh, almost 200 years now uh, because Liberia was formed uh, when uh, it was made possible for uh, slaves um, to return to West Africa. And so uh, early in the uh, 1800s, um, freed slaves from the United States boarded ships uh, and sailed across the Atlantic Ocean and landed in the west coast of Africa uh, and formed the nation of Liberia uh, as a place of hope, uh, as a place of refuge. In fact, one of the themes that you see in much of uh, Liberian life uh, is that God has allowed us uh, to return and God has given us this freedom uh, and God has given us this land. So the United States, um, because the uh, freed slave colonization societies made it possible, uh, has had a unique connection with this country um, in, in, in West Africa. Um, and of course, we as a church here have a unique connection with Liberia, not just because we have uh, so many folks from Liberia who are a part of our church, uh, but as Larice mentioned, uh, Bill Talbert's father uh, was president of Liberia in 1980 
He was also a Baptist pastor and had served as the um, president of the Baptist World Alliance. Uh, and in that coup in 1980, not only was uh, President Reverend Talbert assassinated, but the day before the coup happened, the Liberian Baptist Missionary Convention had met at celebrating a significant anniversary. And uh, in that coup, most of the leadership of the Liberian Baptist Convention were also assassinated uh, or jailed or, or pushed into exile. And so we as a nation and we as a church have a unique connection with the people of this country. So as we pray, let's, let's keep that connection uh, in our hearts and minds. Will you pray with me? Our Father, we do pray for the nation of Liberia, a nation that was born in such hope, a hope of freedom, a hope of self-determination, a nation that was born out of the desire for human beings to live fully human lives again. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for the history of that country, for the accomplishments in um, its, its history in creating a, a democratic society, in creating a society uh, where the people of the country were able to determine their own destiny. But on this moment, Lord, we pause to pray for a country that has been torn apart uh, since 1980, really, uh, by civil strife. The coup in 1980 and then 10 years later, the, the uprising um, from Charles Taylor. And even though uh, for um, a good number of years uh, after Charles Taylor was pushed out of office uh, and dem dem democracy was restored, uh, there was hope. Now the country seems to have been plunged back into financial and uh, economic and social chaos again. Um, so we pray for our brothers and sisters uh, in Liberia. We pray for the wisdom to fill the leaders of that country. We pray for them to see uh, that their job is to govern in a way that will lift up people that will um, help the, the most number of people uh, in that country. We pray for wisdom and, and we pray for courage for leaders to rise up and to, um, to do what is best um, to serve the people. Lord, we pray, f as Bill has asked us to, for reconciliation and for peace. 20 years or better is a long time to be in conflict. A whole generation raises up in that time who knows nothing other than conflict and strife. And the tensions were, were hot. The tensions still boil underneath the surface. So we pray, Lord, that the Christians uh, in Liberia will be the leaders in bringing about reconciliation and peace. We pray, Lord, that as... Liberia has recently recovered uh, from the Ebola crisis and now faces another uh, pandemic crisis with COVID-19, uh, that your healing hand will be mediated through the doctors and the nurses, the health care facilities that are there. We pray for the churches in Liberia, that they will be strong in proclaiming the gospel and in mediating your grace and reconciling love. Lord, we are grateful as a church for the people of Liberia who have graced and do grace our uh, fellowship, who contribute and, and shape and form the fellowship of this church. We pray that they will find peace even as they watch the struggle that goes on across the ocean with their brothers and sisters and their families. We pray that you would help us to find ways to be open to ways that we can be partners and helpers in the cause of freedom, in the cause of reconciliation, uh, in the cause of a just and fair society in this nation of Liberia. Lord, we entrust ourselves and them into your hands in Jesus' name. Amen.
We also want to offer a prayer for other concerns. Some of the concerns on our hearts as a church are members who are in in rehab facilities, who are recovering from falls. Those who are unable to get out of their homes for a variety of reasons, some of them because they have ongoing long-term issues and health crises, partly because of age. Those among our church family, and as a church family, we've experienced the death of two significant members in these past few weeks. On Sunday, there were tornadoes that tore through the southern states of our nation. So there are many communities who are even now not only dealing with pandemic issues, but they're dealing with homes that have been devastated by winds and rain and their lives upended in yet another tremendous way. So as we go and take a few moments to offer a prayer for our concerns, bring some of those people among your family and your friends to mind as we pray. Would you bow with me, please? Holy God, you weep when your people suffer. You forgive when we fail to forgive one another. You offer peace in angel songs, and we are too often deaf to the message. Your love for us is eternal. Your healing power is readily available to all who have the courage to pray. Your will, not mine, be done. In the quiet of this moment, we pray for your healing touch. For your healing touch on the bodies of those who are struggling at home and in hospitals with the COVID-19 virus. We pray for healing for those whose anxiety and fears have been heightened as they spend long hours separated from family and friends as their routines have been broken, as they hear news day after day that makes them anxious. We pray for healing for those who have experienced grief and your presence be with them. We pray for those whose lives have been, up, have been upended in an even more tremendous way as tornadoes came through our southern states and homes and buildings have been demolished. People looking up, trying to find pieces of their lives in the midst of already challenging circumstances. We do live in a time, Lord, when divisiveness is far too much of a reality. Divisiveness within families, divisiveness between leaders, Open us to see possibilities. Open us to respond to others with your love and to see your face in the face of the others that we see. Open our hearts and hands to respond with compassion when we see needs of people across the world, those who are facing seemingly impossible challenges. We do pray especially for those among our family and friends in need of your healing touch. Those who are in hospitals, in rehab centers, in long-term care centers, those who are at home under the care of family, restore them to health, grant gentleness to all who provide care. We remember also those who have died 
those who have died due to the virus in our city and across our, wor our world, those who have died from other health concerns. Comfort their families as they grieve. Surround them with your loving presence when they cannot be surrounded by each other's presence. As the world faces unprecedented, Ill unprecedented illness, guide our leaders as they make decisions regarding the opening of businesses and returning our lives to something that looks more normal. We do give thanks for the medical personnel, those who work in groceries and other essential service workers, for those businesses who provide care and services in the face of this pandemic. Grant us courage, merciful God, to remain strong, to hear your call on our lives, and to bear witness to your love and presence in our lives. Hear our prayer, gracious God. In the name of your Son we pray. Amen. As we continue our worship this evening, let's join together in singing a great Baptist hymn by B.B. McKinney, Let Others See Jesus and You, a hymn that gets to the evangelistic spirit of Baptist life, but also reminds us that um, throughout the whole world, there are a lot of things going on. We have a lot more time to watch the news right now, and we know how difficult it is for everyone in the world these days. And so we want to show hope and peace by letting our lives reflect Jesus Christ, our Savior. So let's sing together um, our hymn, Let Others See Jesus in You.
Last week, I was on a Zoom call with uh, some other pastors uh, that are part of uh, the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship of Kentucky churches. Uh, we do this every Thursday, just get together on the phone and see how we're doing and share information and ideas with each other. And on this particular call, Dr. Wade Rowett, who um, is a pastoral counselor, teaches pastoral, pastoral counseling at uh, the Baptist Seminary of Kentucky and does some counseling at uh, St. Matthew's uh, Baptist Church, um, was sharing with us about pastoral care and pastoral care opportunities uh, during this time of COVID-19. And he used a phrase that I found uh, pretty interesting. He, he said, we are in a time of sardine living. We're in a time of sardine living. Uh, for a lot of folks, uh, kids are back home from school. You know, colleges emptied out their dorms, so uh, kids have gone back home. So adults and parents who weren't used to having their adult children in the house 24 hours a day, seven days a week, or are now having their adult children in the house 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, even people who are not used to having their elementary school kids and their middle school and high school kids in the house all day long, every day of the week, are having kids at home. Uh, and those kids aren't used to having their parents around uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And um, Wade said that we are in a situation where we're all kind of cram-packed into the house together. Uh, and having to adjust to a whole new routine. Uh, and I love that phrase, sardine living, because it, I think for a lot of us it may capture uh, the way that we feel. Uh, our house is not the same house that it's been uh, because uh, folks are there that, that, that haven't normally been there. And I was, as I was thinking about what to reflect upon tonight during our time of prayer, uh, in the uh, daily lectionary uh, that I use, uh, the uh, epistle lesson in that lectionary for today comes from the third chapter of Colossians. Uh, it is what's known as the house tablet portion of Colossians, where Paul is basically uh, giving the church uh, and families within the church instructions on how to live their lives. Uh, so in Colossians chapter 3, uh, beginning in verse 12, uh, the Apostle Paul writes, As God's chosen ones... Holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which you were indeed called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, I'm not sure that the Apostle Paul was necessarily thinking about sardine living. But I think the Apostle Paul's words may, may resonate well with us as we're seeking to live in our families, uh, in our homes, uh, perhaps in a different way, where we're closer uh, we can't get out and get away from each other. Uh, so we have to put up with even the things that uh, irritate each, each other ab about each other. Uh, sometimes we've used to just been able to get out in the car and go shopping or go to the grocery store and do whatever to get away from that. And we can't uh, necessarily do that now. But I think the Apostle Paul reminds us of some pretty good things that we sh could keep in mind uh, during these days of kind of uh, being... Uh, forced uh, to live together and in, in closer quarters. And let me just uh, remind us of some of the suggestions uh, that Paul makes. He encourages us to clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience to bear one another, to bear with one another, and to forgive each other if we have a complaint. Um, you know, in this time where um, we, we have to be closer to one another, I, I just think that Paul invites us to remember um, that I, 
as one member of the family, may feel like I'm being inconvenienced. I may feel like that my routine is upset. I may feel like other people are getting in my way. But Paul would encourage us to remind ourselves that other people in the same household are probably feeling the same way. And even if we're not sardine living, um, we, our routines aren't the same. You know, now Ruth and I, for example, don't have anybody else living at our house. But the truth of the matter is, is that she's working from home these days, which means that she is in the house, um, and a lot of the time, like right now, by herself, uh, working at home in a different environment, trying to adjust to talking to people on Zoom and the telephone. And, and, and that, that can be something that can cause you to be anxious, can cause you to be um, stressed, uh, can cause you to be some, maybe sometimes even irritable. Uh, because it's not what we're used to. And, and Paul encourages us to remember that if we're feeling those things, other people in our homes are probably feeling those same things. If we're struggling with those things, the other people in our home are also struggling with those things. And so Paul encourages us uh, in the midst of difficult circumstances, when it's real easy uh, to get on each other's nerves, uh, when it's real easy to just get irritated at the whole situation, to put on some attributes of kindness and humility and with meekness and to learn how to bear with one another, and just to put up with one another, to recognize that people's moods and people's sadness, maybe even people's depression or anger is a normal response to what we're going through. Sometimes people don't need us to fix their problem. They just need us to be there to hear it. Uh, so Paul invites us to bear with one another. And then I think it's, it's fascinating that he said, and forgive. If somebody does something that irritates you, he doesn't say confront them. He doesn't say tell them what they need to do to stop doing it. He just simply says, if you've got to complain against one another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. This won't last forever. And we want to make sure that our relationships and our families come out of this stronger than they came into it. And learning how to forgive one another, learning how to bear with and overlook even some of the things uh, that, that we might want to address in this time uh, may lead us to come through this a bit stronger. And then you'll notice in this passage, uh, Paul also says, and clothe yourselves with love. You know, families are built on love. Families survive and thrive best when we can love each other. And this is going to be a test of our love. <laughs> you know, they say heart, that, that, that absence makes the heart grow fonder. I wonder what that always means for presence then. But, but this presence is going to test our love for one another. Uh, and, and Paul says, just remember every day when you get on, put on love. But I want to close with, with another thought here because Paul says something that we usually address to the church. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly and admonish one another in wisdom with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God. Maybe in this time of, as Wade put it, sardine living, would be a good time for us as families to learn how to worship together again. You know, so much of the time we've put worship off on the church. It's something the church needs to provide. It's something that the church needs to organize. And we go to church in order to worship. And maybe we and our families worship individually. We go into our prayer closets or into our quiet places. But how many of us still worship together? And by that, I'm not simply talking about saying uh, the word of thanks before a meal. I'm talking about how many of us as families actually get together and sing hymns and songs and read scripture and share with each other uh, what the scriptures are saying to us. Uh, maybe this is a great time for us as families to learn how to worship together as family so that when we gather together for worship in the church, we bring all of that worship as family together. And it deepens and enriches the praise to God. 
Paul concludes this passage with, a, with something I heard my dad say to me all the time. He says, and whatever you do, whatever you do, whether it's washing the dishes, sweeping the floor, picking up somebody else's clothes, allowing somebody else to be in your space, whatever you do, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father. Yeah, it may be a little bit stressful having all the kids home. But you know, one thing we can do is give thanks to God that we have the kids to be home. It may be stressful having our adult kids at home, but it, we can give thanks to God for that. And yes, it may even be difficult to, to give thanks or to remember that, to be grateful that, that even though we can't be together with other family and friends, we can still give thanks that we have each other. But I want to encourage us tonight as families to hear that word, whatever you do, as a parent, as a child, as an adult child, whatever you do as a, as a family, as a grandparent, whatever you do, live as a family as if you were living in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. As we conclude our service this evening, we'll conclude singing the hymn, Thine is the Glory. It reminds us of what we were um, discussing on Sunday morning, that the day of resurrection began as a gloomy, dark, quiet day. But upon the realization of Jesus' resurrection, everything was changed. As this hymn says, Jesus' resurrection scatters fear and scatters gloom. So tonight, as we sing, Thine is the glory, let's remember that if we've met Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, um, then everything is different, and we can live in that resurrected life with Jesus.
And now may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ abide in your hearts and minds through the power of the Holy Spirit today and every day. Amen and amen.